What's up? Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a quick video today about um, a recent cover that I made for, I posted this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm working on a new graphic novel for Riverdale, an original Riverdale graphic novel that will be out probably next fall. I'll link um, the information below. I'm super excited about it. It's gonna be a really cool book. It's going to fill in some of the gaps um, along the way for season four, which is currently going on right now. So all the Riverdale fans out there who are fans of the show and hopefully fans of the comic, um, I think this is gonna really bridge the gap and I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So look out for that. Um, I posted the cover that I did for it. Um, Archie Comics announced it along with this cover and um, I'll post the final cover somewhere around here. I'm really happy with the way it came out, but I wanted to show you how I blended traditional approaches. Um, I drew it traditionally on 11 by 17 board um, and then how I colored it digitally and penciled it digitally and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna take you through the process a little bit. So stay tuned. I'm gonna to try to keep this quick. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I sent Archie a bunch of ideas that I came up with. Um, primarily, we were going for just like a group shot, um, something dynamic, interesting, but that can showcase all the characters. And um, I sent them a bunch of different ideas. Um, they went along the lines of this idea, uh, which was a group shot of the whole crew outside of Pop's Diner. Um, I thought this would be a fun illustration to work on, and um, I kind of like the, the composition. So. Um, from there, I went on to pencil it digitally. This is kind of uh, something I'll do every now and then when I'm working on a traditional piece. I'll pencil it digitally just because I have a lot more freedom when I'm working digitally in terms of moving things around, setting up perspective guides, changing things. Um, so I try to get the whole underdrawing done digitally and then I'll print it out um, and lightbox it. So before I did that, because I was working on an 11 by 17 sheet of Bristol board, I had to piece the image together. So this is a quick video of me piecing it all together. I just, cause I don't have 11 by 17 typing paper to print it out on. So um, I just pieced together uh, four or five sheets of typing paper and um, cut them up and pieced it together that way. So if you don't have like, you know, big sheets of paper or an oversized printer, uh, this is a good way to still make it happen when you want to work on something big. So from there I lightboxed it and started just penciling traditionally. I like to use an HB pencil and because I did a lot of the line work digitally, when I'm penciling it at this stage, I'm not necessarily tracing what I did. So every pass that I take on this image, I'm trying to sort of add something to it rather than just trace. Like if you draw something digitally and then essentially trace it with pencil and then ink it and then you trace those lines, the work starts to become dead in a way. It's almost like a, a Xerox of a Xerox of a Xerox. So I try not to be held down so much by the underdrawing. Once I have all the pencils done, uh, I go into my favorite part, which is the inking. For the inking process, I used a mix of brush and pen. The brush I used was a number two and a number four, and then I used a variety of pens, Stadler's and Marvy Lay pens, and probably whatever else I had lying around. When I'm inking traditionally, I like to um, use a blend of brush and pen, but I try not to get too specific with the tools that I use. Um, whatever's lying around and whatever works, I'll just use that. After the final line work was done, I scanned it back into the computer. I don't have an oversized scanner, so I had to scan it in several pieces. But once it was scanned and into the computer, I then opened the file, cleaned it up a little bit. When I'm working traditionally, after I scan it, I tend to have to adjust the levels, clean up some of the eraser marks that are left over. And then once the black and white art was set, I went in and started coloring. I've said this before in other process videos, but coloring for me is probably 
the hardest part of the process. I think very much in black and white, so when I have to work with color, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, I'm trying to study color a lot more and how to create moods and atmospheres with color. Um, it's a challenge for me, but um, I'm enjoying the process. So this part of the process probably took the longest on this cover. But after working on it enough and playing around with it, uh, I was happy with the results. And it seems like Archie is too, so that's really cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little look into my process of this cover. Um, like I said, check out the link below if you want to know more information about this upcoming book. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.